New set, and this time we're not waiting for week one, we are doing it actually on day one. Welcome, welcome everyone. Set 12 is finally out on Zero JP, one of the most excited, most exciting sets that most people are very excited for. Exciting, yes. <laughs> but yeah, so we have a lot of new decks, a lot of updates, and the meta has definitely shifted a lot. So it's going to be interesting to take a look. I've actually been playing with almost every deck from these. The only one I've played, like maybe one game with is Garmore because that's the only one I didn't really pull for so I just tried out you know the 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 pre-made deck that it gives you for challenge fights but everything else I've basically been playtesting and you know I'll probably still be refining the decks uh, more and more before the actual deck and fights but this is going to be sort of your first impression sort of you know day one deck if you're struggling you're not sure what to build right now this will kind of give you a better sort of footing to start on all right so let's get started with you know just going from the top we have eradicators so eradicators got the smallest amount of support i think together with gold but that support is definitely very huge so that is with mr vowing saber dragon reverse so this is the cross break ride for vowing uh sword dragon so if you got it now in set nine in english make sure you look forward to this support he got a massive buff you know, he's now counter must 1 instead of 2 to lock 2 Eradicator rear guards, gains 10k, uh, randomly pops 2 of your opponent's rear guards, uh, prioritizing the back row. And then on top of that, his second skill, this is a new one. During your turn, if you have retired at least 3 or more rear guards by your effects, then he gains a crit. That is new. So with the break ride, you instantly retire 3 because of the break ride retiring 1 and this retiring 2. So it's really, really good. So I've kind of built, I haven't really changed it. I decreased 1 Rising Phoenix because, you know, we have to lock Eradicators. And then we're also, I'm run, trying one Rochishin because he gains 5k every time he retires something. So on that big cross ride turn, it can get pretty huge because he can lock the booster behind him and he will still get like basically 15k extra power just on his own. Um, I put up more 12k attackers because now we can lock the unit behind the 12k attacker and it's still going to be able to hit the vanguard if it's not a cross ride, which, you know, with vowing and ethics, there will be more of. And yeah, we're basically just playing more eradicators. I'm not playing too many of the drop one, draw one dudes. I'm still playing the Rising Phoenix. I know that it's a little bit risky. So Rising Phoenix might get dropped just because of the eradicator name, but I haven't playtested enough of this deck. I've only done like a couple games to really like be sure if that's a call that's worth making or not. Then for our one of grade three, we're, we're playing sweep. Why am I playing this as my 1-up instead of Golem Buster? Well, that's because he doesn't actually cost any Kalmas to retire something. So his skill is just, when you ride him, put one of your eradicated rearguards into your soul to retire a rearguard. So this is like if you've used up all your Candle Blast for your Vowing and your other skills, and you just need to somehow clear a front row to be able to finish the game, just go into your 1-of, uh, sweep command if you have it in hand, otherwise you just grind it out, you know. So I think as a 1-of, it's definitely a nice little tech. So that's Eradicators. You know, you're going to see proper deck and fights for that soon. Of course, we have probably the most... This is, of course, I would say, you know, from playing a fair bit, from playing a fair bit, um, this, you know, this this new set, you know, it's only been two days, but I've been playing a lot. This really feels like it's the best deck. You know, Link Joker, people were really scared of and, and you know, just screaming about, but, you know, Revengers in the end are the most popular and they definitely feel like the strongest deck right now. Um, you know, all the websites are rate, rating them super high. And this is my build that I've been rocking with. So this is a pure build. I'm not running the main. Some people run like one or two in the main. But I've chosen to take the pure build. Um, I'm not going to go over everything here because it'll take too long. But the important things to note is I'm running Creeping Dark Oat instead of Claudas. Because Creeping Dark Oat lets us search either Mordred if we don't have it in hand, which is the Break Ride. Or Raging Form Dragon, which needs a Persona Blast in, its hand, in your hand to re-ride from hand. So... I think Creeping Dark Code, it was literally the starter for Revengers when they were the best deck in the TCG back then, in 2013 and 2014, so I don't think that's going to change until Judge Ball comes out. And, you know, Claudas is a cool card, but it doesn't help you win when, you know, when you're missing Mordred or you need that second Raging Form, you know, without having to retire three for his second skill. Um, then we're running this as a one-off because it's a Revenger, we're running this as our heal because it's a Revenger, and it's like an all-right backup ride, but definitely these will get replaced with Drag Ruler Phantom in the future, so that's something to be excited about, and there's going to be more Revenger Great 3s in the future as well. Um, yeah, four Blaster Darks, Revengers, four Dorans, I think that's nothing too surprising. Two of these because you just need to search it from the deck with Tar 2, basically, and then I'm running Tanky Vanillas and Masquerades, but we'll talk more about, you know, the techs and ratios and stuff in the deck and fight. It might change until then, but that'll give you a good base list to go with. Link Joker! So, I got a lot of SPs for Link Joker. <laughs> so, this is my base build. I've been playing a fair bit with Link Joker, but I definitely feel like there's more improvements to be made. Like, I'm choosing to run, obviously, this is the best card, you know, the break card is super important for this deck. Nebula Lord, you know, pops off, 
gives you extra power, is the only... There's only two cards in the clan right now in Zero that can actually plus. So, locking does not technically count as plussing, because you're not removing a card from the board. You're just, like, you know, temporarily removing it and making that slot be unusable, right? So, you're not drawing a card, you're not retiring a card, so it doesn't actually equal a plus one. So, the only pluses in the deck are Nebula Lord's effect, which says if your opponent has three or more lock cards at the start of your battle phase to draw one, and the deer, which is the on-hit count plus two to draw one. Everything else doesn't actually plus, so that's why you really need to rely on this to plus, otherwise you need to just, like, shift your entire game plan to, like, you know, be able to lock them out of their place. So, in order to do that, I mean, we have Mobius Breath, which is, like, Vanguard Circle, when it hits the opponent's Vanguard, lock something. This is only good to, like, cuck some starters, and even then, if you attack them and give them one damage, if you're going second, they will still be able to use their starter skill, if it's, like, an Eric-style starter. So, that's something you have to keep in mind, you know? This is, you know, we're running some of those, like, when a card is locked power gainers to make big columns, you know, even bigger. I really like this dude. He has a skill that when your opponent has a locked unit, he gains 3k on both turns. So he's 11k on your opponent's turn, which can make it pretty, you know, stressful to play against. Um, this might go up in, in count. So for now, like, this is my basic attempt at Link Joker at first. Um, you know, running the four Schwarz shield as a backup. You know, it's kind of lost three Persona Blast and lock three cards and gain 10k and a crit. You know, in zero, that's fairly big, but Kalmas 3 is really expensive. Uh, of course, when you break away with Infinite Zero, you can lock the entire board, but, you know, it's it, it only matters when your opponent's at high enough damage that you can kill them the next turn, you know? It's it's like, there's a lot of things you have to think about when you're playing Link Joker, and I definitely want to cover it more when we're playing. Also, I see we're getting random follows even when I'm not streaming, which is interesting. <laughs> but yeah, so, that's Link Joker. We're gonna talk much more about it when we actually get into the deck. Then here is Ethics Reverse. This was the deck I wasn't sure about uh, going into this video, and I ran an extra bonus stream to test it. This build comes from um, Kyra's Darkblade, so he gave me this build because I was just like not sure what I was running with. I had a really weird build going on, and he gave me a much better one, and this actually is really strong. So, like, Reverse Ethics is basically like Ethics Blau, but you finish on cross right numbers, because of course Ethics Reverse is, you know, he counts to lock one rear guard, which is really nice, and discard two beast deities to get a restanding skill and draw two, but he's a cross right, so you finish on a 13k base, which makes it harder for your opponent to kill you if you don't kill them on that break right turn. And it's not as much of a, like, all-in YOLO. You're only discarding two, you're not discarding your entire hand for, like, you know, the stern block Kluger, so it feels more balanced, it's not as balls to the wall. I'm still, you know, we're still running Kiraras here to get the extra draw, energy charger to get the extra draw. Keep in mind that ethics reverses lock, is not a beast deity lock. You can lock any rear guard, so you can lock the energy charger behind your vanguard. That's usually the best target. Or the Mirayo. I'm running the Mirayo because, you know, you need to hit Ethics. Like, this deck, you have to break right. Like, Ethics reverse on its own just does not do enough. It does not do enough. It just restands. But with Ethics Buster break right, it restands itself and restands the board, which means that, you know, Golden Anglet and the Yamatona Drake do scale. So that's also very important. So this deck is really cool. I'm very excited to feature it more. This also helps us to uh, filter into our break ride and into our cross ride. So yeah, very good build. Uh, thank you to Kairos. Special shout out. Check out his channel. I'll leave a link in the description. But yeah, moving forward, uh, here is Ethics Buster Extreme. I've only played like two games with this, so this one you got to take with you know, pinch of salt. Pin that that is that is the the saying, right? But anyway, what makes Ethics Buster Extreme different is that. He is a card that goes online even without the break ride. Because this skill is already for when you drive check a great tool or less beast deity, you get to restand one of your rear guards. If you don't have any rear guards to stand, instead you can give a, a rear guard plus 5k for the whole turn. So he's nice because even if you don't get the break ride, you can still restand your board. And if you do get the break ride, you can restand your front row with the break ride skill and then just give them extra power with Ethics' skill. So he's really cool. It's a different build. Um, I don't think it's as strong as reverse. So let's say, let's. Putting it this way, like, Ethics Reverse has a really high ceiling because of the restanding combo, but a much lower floor. And what that means is that, like, if you brick, it's just not going to be doing much. Whereas Ethics Buster Extreme has a much higher floor, because even if you don't break ride, even if you just ride Ethics Buster with, like, meh units on the board, it's still going to do quite a lot for you, because it'll give power, it'll restand, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, however... Extreme's ceiling is not that high. All it can do is give you some restands on the board and some extra power. So, 
you gotta look at what you prefer basically and yes in here we can actually run the ride horn because we don't care about which grade three you ride first you know if you ride the extreme first it doesn't actually matter that much so i think ride horn is fine here i will test this build a bit more a bit more before we get the deck and fight but you know this is kind of my early impression of this build but yeah like i said so reverse higher ceiling lower floor extreme um much higher floor much lower ceiling so that's kind of how you should look at it uh, and those terms will come in handy in the future then I think finally, if I'm not mistaken, uh, no, not Vermilion, we have uh, Liberators. So Liberators got a little bit of support uh, with Garmore. I'm running some crits now, you know, just to try and, you know, because you really want to rush with this deck. It's very rush centered and, you know, you just kind of like rush them. They trade your stuff away, but then like you can ride this when they give you four damage to recuperate your entire board. And then Garmore is a new effect that lets you protect your units from being retired by your opponent's effects or losing intercepts. So literally it's a Narukami counter. Um, so that's pretty interesting. And then of course, you know, I don't have the full cards. I'm actually missing a few. I only pulled one Garmore from 300 packs. So, you know, you guys saw that. Um, still, great 2 lineup hasn't changed at all. You know, if you saw my Gancelot deck and fight, then you already know, you know, about the other lineup. So it hasn't changed much. Just switched out the stands for crits. And Garmore's in here now because he's a pretty cool card. Not running Barco because I feel like it's too situational and too restrictive. Um, you know, having to have Blaster Blade Liberator is pretty rough, I would say. So, you know, you know it's, it's just a little bit tough. But yeah, so... This is Liberators, and I think that more or less does it for this set's um, new decks. So, of course, we'll have uh, the Grand Blue Clan event coming up as well. But, you know, I'll try to hopefully pull some good stuff for that. I don't know if, how many Kokaitises I have, and you really need the old Triple Rares too, so... Yeah, here's hoping. But anyway, that's basically going to be it for me today. That was the Day 1 decks for set 12. So you guys are going to have something to experiment with in JP. Whereas, I guess, for the global players, it's going to be more, you know, looking at the deck and fights that I post over this month. And the more, like, finished builds. Keep in mind that also this Sunday, we have the Day 1 for the Vanguard Zero Championship Finals Autumn. So we're going to actually see these decks in action and see which decks are the best for this meta. And I think that'll give us a better impression of what the best deck lists are as well. So we'll see if FX can run it back uh, from summer or if it's going to be just Revenger, Link Joker, and Narukami Fiesta, you know, left and right. But yeah, on that note, that's basically going to be it for me today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.